there's three areas the interviewer expects you to cover. And in this video, I'm going over the financial ratios that will tick off the interviewer's expectations with the first area being liquidity. Now the ratio to explain liquidity is the easiest and it's important you start with this one, which is the current ratio. So the current ratio is calculated by dividing the current assets into current liabilities and the final number is given as a ratio. The reason why this is expected to be your first ratio is because it's the quickest way to figure out if there's something inherently wrong with the business. You see, when you're measuring liquidity, you need to be able to tell if the business can repay its short-term debt when it's due. And both of the inputs of this ratio assist you in this by number one, showing the assets owned by a company that can be converted to cash through liquidation, use or sale within one year. And number two, the company's short-term financial obligations that are due within the next 12 months. You should expect the ratio at a minimum to be one, but more realistically, it should be around 1.5, anything less, and it indicates the company could have issues in the near future. However, the second most important step, which most candidates forget to mention, is how good is the ratio when it's compared to its competitors. You see, whilst ratios over time can tell you how the company is progressing, it won't mean much unless you compare it to its competitors and the industry average. The context of financial ratios is absolutely key when it comes to assessing companies with them. What's considered high or low varies between industries, and so it's crucial you understand the norms of the sector that the company operates in. Okay, so after telling the interviewer your initial analysis via this ratio, it's time to move on to the second area, which is a major driver in a company's success, and that's profitability. Now, there's a few profitability ratios which can be used, but the two I want to focus on in an interview is number one, the net profit margin. What it looks at is if the company is managing to make enough profit from sales and keep its costs under control. It's that double combo of sales and costs which make this for a good ratio. Now, it's calculated by dividing the net income, so that's income after expenses, into total revenue, and it's represented as a percentage. Now, one of the drawbacks of this ratio, which you definitely want to mention, is it's difficult to compare figures to other companies' net profit margins. What you'll find is each company is likely to include one-time expenses or one-off asset sales in their figures, and these will temporarily either increase or decrease the profits for that company's specific period. So because of the ratio's company-specific nature, the best utilization of the number is by looking to see how the company's own net profit margin has changed over time, as opposed to comparing it to its competitors. Now, this second profit figure is really interesting as it goes into the heart of how well the company is being run, and that's return on capital employed. And I'm just going to refer to it as Roki. So Roki tells you the amount of profit a company is generating per $1 of capital employed. Its calculation is a bit more complicated than the previous ratios. What you'll do is divide the earnings before interest and taxation into the capital employed with the denominator found by subtracting current liabilities from total assets, which ultimately represents the shareholders' equity plus long-term debts. The more profit per $1 a company can generate, the better the Roki figure will become. Investors tend to favor companies with stable and rising Roki levels over companies where Roki is very volatile or, of course, if it's downwards trending. In my personal experience, this is a very good ratio as it helps you identify inefficient capital and is comparable across industries. But like most ratios, it's very backwards looking and is susceptible to manipulation with various creative accounting techniques. So that's always something that has to be investigated when utilizing this ratio. But I'll end with a positive comment about Roki and it also leads me on to the next area you need to be familiar with for your credit risk interview, which is the ratio does a very good job of combining capital allocation with efficiency. So efficiency reflects how well the company is utilizing its assets and liabilities internally. This could be the time it takes to collect cash from customers or the amount of time it takes to convert inventory to cash. But here's the interesting part, which many candidates fail to link in the interviews. Improving efficiency can boost your profits. Just by mentioning this, you'll stand out from other candidates, and that's why this is the third important area to cover in your interview. Whilst Roki touches efficiency, there's several efficiency-specific ratios which will give you a better analysis in your interviews, with some of them being inventory turnover ratio, which is the number of times 
a company sells out of its stocks or goods within a given period of time, accounts receivable turnover ratio, this measures how efficient the company is when it comes to its revenue collection, and sales to equity ratio calculated by net sales, which is found by subtracting sales returns from gross sales, whilst the average shareholder's equity is found by summing up the beginning and ending equity and then dividing it by two. With the last one measuring the company's ability to use shareholders' capital to generate sales. In other words, the amount of equity that is needed to support a given level of revenue. And again, just like all ratios, figures in isolation are useless. Always make sure you compare the previous years and if appropriate, compare it to competitors and industry averages. Now, knowing ratios is an example of hard skills that will be tested in your interview, but many interview candidates are surprised when the interviewer starts testing them on their soft skills. They're just as common, and if you want to know five likely soft skills that will get tested in your credit risk or financial analyst interviews, I've already made a video on that topic, so go check that out so you can stay ahead of everyone else, and I'll see you all in the next video.